everyone, and welcome to the Today's the Day Changemakers podcast. I am Jody Grunwald. This is part two of the episode titled, Through the Dark, A Stage Light, with my guests, Coley Campany and Kim Berrios Lynn. They are actors, producers, writers, advocates, and two incredible friends helping each other through this thing we call life. In this episode, they share how they are bringing their life experiences into their work. They are two change makers who care deeply about social issues and inspiring others to go towards the things that are in their heart. Coley can be seen on screen playing Linda in Candy on Hulu, Dee Dee Robertson in The Eyes of Tammy Faye, also on The First Lady, Watchmen, and the upcoming season of Heels and Mike. Coley co-wrote a play titled Stillbirth. It's a play about pregnancy loss that combines stories of various ways pregnancies end. And she co-created Supermodels Winning with Kim Berrios Lynn that can be viewed via Coley's YouTube channel. You can catch Kim Berrios Lynn in HBO Max's Pretty Little Liars, airing July 28th in a recurring role. Other credits include Better Nate Than Ever on Disney+, Plus, The Politician on Netflix. She can also be seen on Pose, New Amsterdam, Almost Family, and Bull. Kim is the co-founder of the award-winning, socially conscious indie production company, And She Flew, co-founder of the Social Justice Theater Org, Colors of Community, and is on the advisory committee for the Zach Gia Plutter Kids Foundation. Please subscribe to the Today's the Day Changemakers YouTube channel, stream this podcast on all streaming sites. Reviews and shares are always welcomed and help us to be heard. Like us on Facebook and Instagram by going to Today is the Day, Live It. To learn more about Today is the Day Consulting and Coaching Services and the new Today is the Day Changemakers Connective, go to todayistheday.liveit.com. Sign up for our mailing list to be notified when new events and networking opportunities become available. Also, I am the CEO and co-founder of the Zach G. Plotter Kids Foundation. To learn more about how the organization is connecting children with a financial need to an ongoing creative outlet, go to applaudourkids.org. The views expressed by all Today's the Day Changemakers podcast guests are their own. Their appearance on the Today's the Day Changemakers podcast does not imply any endorsement of them or any entity that they represent. Have a great week, everyone. I'm sure a lot of people listening after I read your bios want to also know how you wound up getting some of these incredible roles and things that you're doing right now. And um, and I know, Kim, we, we alluded before to the fact that your path to um, being an actor it's you didn't start there um and your your parents weren't really all for you going into acting at first if i'm if i'm correct on that that's right that's right so there was um i started acting because um there was a manager uh jmm i believe jmm was uh, mm-hmm. uh sent out the, um some you know to to their different dance schools and a few of us started acting in commercials and um i was i believe i was in late elementary school, middle school, like around then. Um, and I did that for a few years and that worked out and I loved it. Um, it was a lot of my mom. Cause like I said, she was, it was just her and, um, and she's driving in the city and that's, you know, that's, a, that's tough. And so, um, I, I went through some rough years in high school of, um, I was always questioning and why this and why that, and, you know, and there, I, I, you know, my parents were pretty strict and I didn't have many friends, although I had everything else and I understand what, you know, what they provided for me. Um, and, uh, I started, uh, rebelling a bit. Um, I, I wanted, I wanted to hang out with my friends and, um, I, I went through a really tough patch and it was also tough on my parents. Um, I ended up running away from home. <laughs> like, I, I don't say that lightly. I, it was a really, really dark time for me. And when I came back, rightfully so, my parents said, you know, no more dance. If you want you know, your freedom, you're going to have to just, you know, get a job. And, and so I started walk, working at Boston Market. <laughs> I, had, I had some freedom, um, but I no longer had dance. I still have dreams about that because it was, it, was, it was hard, but I understand that as a parent now, you know. Um, that's what came with it. And so, um, when it was time to go to, to college, um, I, I, I did try to apply to, and I almost got into, um, one school, but I didn't prepare my model. Anyway, I ended up going to school and I picked, uh, what is that? What you liberal arts, mm-hmm. um, the coolest thing I could think of that I was actually interested in. And I ended up, you know, getting a degree, degree in anthropology. Um, I, I, it was very interesting and I now I understand why I loved it so much and it's been helpful now just to understand human and, and evolution and cultural anthropology and all of that and it's been really useful for me but um, it wasn't acting. Um, I did um, 
I did take classes. I tried to, I tried to get in acting every, whenever I could. I was like an improv group, but this was all extracurricular stuff. And then I graduated and I was like, man, what do I do? <laughs> I ended up, uh, my dad was back and forth from Florida. So I lived in Florida for a bit and I worked at a subprime mortgage company. And it was like, it, yes, I, I didn't, I didn't understand the gravity of what I was doing, but it was not helpful to our economy. I didn't last very long there. Um, I, I knew I wanted to be back in New York City. I knew I needed to be an actor, but I didn't know how um, I would do that. So I decided to go into, <laughs> I, I went to Parsons for fashion marketing because I thought, oh, that's creative. That's something my parents could digest. It's creative, yet it's scholarly, right? And I can work in the city, but like secretly I could audition. Um, but I quickly learned that this was a full-time thing, a full-time job, uh, work, going to Parsons. And I, I learned a lot. I ended up working in fashion for a while and that made my parents proud. Um, but, uh, I quickly learned that to be in that type of field, it's very much like acting. You have to love it because it's, when you start out, it's grueling hours. It's very little pay. I had, I would work on the weekends, then also work full time in the week. And I knew that it wasn't my passion. Every, to every, Every time I'd have to set my um, computer password, it would be actor one, actor two, actor three, because secretly the whole time I just knew I wanted to be an actor and I, I didn't have any training. I just knew I wanted to do it. You know, I did. Um, I just I just I just knew it. In my, um, I did community theater here and there, you know, but I didn't have proper training or anything. And then um, I was working at uh, I had left one one really demanding job at a, a, when I was a PR assistant and then I worked in production and I moved to a very socially conscious co uh, company, Eileen Fisher. They're wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. If I loved fashion, I would have stayed there. Um, but I, I, I wasn't in it. My heart wasn't in it. Um, I ended up working. I always end up, ended up working long hours everywhere. Cause that was just the perfectionist in me. And that, that's on me. That wasn't them. Um, but I ended up meeting my husband, my, my now current partner. Um, and I was in the midst of this revelation that I, uh, it was time. It was now or never. Um, my cousin, Bobby, who also did the labyrinth intensive, he was on his way to, lo to law school. Um, we had this conversation because in his undergrad, he had taken an acting class and, and he's also an actor now. Um, and, and he told me about the actor studio and I looked up the actor studio once and I said, wow, they have an MFA program. And then, you know, shortly after meeting my husband, I was like, P.S. Now that you're in love with me, I'm leaving my job and I'm going to be an actor and like, and you know, you're stuck with me. And he was very supportive, but that was a, that's something we laugh about where he was like, I feel like this like solid, like, you know, climbing the corporate ladder partner. And you're like, just kidding. I'm an actor. Waka waka. Um, that's how I ended up in acting. And I never looked back. And my cousin actually auditioned with me for the for the actor studio drama school and they asked him to audition so he auditioned and instead of going to law school which his parents loved um mm. now he's successful so they're you know they're they're cool with it um and he ended up being I mean what what he's in movies and he's working now he's doing great so um that's that's my story and how I ended up back in acting at a um, and, and he's the one who filled in for you, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Bobby, 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 Daniel Rodriguez, people look him up. <laughs> yeah. He's, yes. He's awesome because awesome. the Plotter Kids Foundation, which I'm the CEO of and Kim being the, uh, on our board, she was also going to be our soiree, um, celebrity judge yeah. for our gala. And then she was working, which yeah. was so cool. Wow. So, so cool. So, um, Coley, your, your break into all of this great uh, things that are on your resume now, how did that, all of that happen? Well, it actually happened at the time of stillbirth. Um, I, I moved to Atlanta, uh, left New York because I just, I couldn't even get a pinky toe in the door to get auditions. And I'd been paying attention to Atlanta and I was like, let me, <clears throat> let me go there and see if I can kind of get in the industry that way. So I, I did and I auditioned for it was actually a show on my birthday and I was doing still birth the reading and found out that I'd booked a role, which was just like a little kind of co-star role, but, but pretty, pretty intense on, on the resident. It was on the first episode of the resident and they ended up writing me into the second episode. Um, so that kind of began uh, for me, my film and TV career. And um, 
yeah, it seems like every time stillbirth kind of popped up, it, it coincided with me booking something. So it felt very kind of like, like mystical or ethereal or something. There was something there for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, I've just been kind of plugging away auditioning and, you know, booking some things here and there. And um, during the pandemic, really some things kind of shifted uh, in terms of like creating my own projects because all, you know, all of us were in a situation where we really had to, to um, zigzag somehow. And Kim and I had always kept a online uh, friendship we, you know, she had done, she had played me in the play. So we had already had that bonding experience, but, you know, we lived in two different places, but we would kind of comment on each other's stuff. And um, there was a, there was a video of a runway show, like a very high fashion runway show. And we started joking back and forth about how fun it would be if we were, how funny it'd be if we were actually on that runway with these models and, you know, kind of dress the way that we dressed and, you know, being the age that we are and, you know, with, with who we are and we were eating ice cream cones <laughs> and just something about that was just really funny. And I, and I was, I think I was on a walk when we were talking about it and I walked, I came back and, and I sat down and I wrote uh, in 30 minutes, a six episode show um, that then became something that we actually filmed during the pandemic. She actually flew in and, uh, we took a lot of precautions and, you know, cause at that time, you know, we, very little was still known, but so we kept it very small and we filmed it all in my house. And this place is, you know, the, the show had like, I don't know, six locations or something like that, but we made the house as if it were these six different locations. <laughs> and it was just the two of us and one other or two other actors. And we filmed it. And it's a, it's called supermodel twinning and it, it cracks us up. I mean, <laughs> we think we're we hilarious. <laughs> I've watched, I've, I, I've watched five out of the six episodes of Raise My Hand. It's so funny yeah. and it's so great. And I absolutely, and it's on YouTube, right? Yeah, it's it is on YouTube and, and they're like a, yeah, they're like a minute to a minute and a half episodes. It's, um, it is six of them. And it's really just about these, we played identical twin sisters, um, <laughs> And we, we, our mom told us that we could do anything we set our mind to and we believed it. And so like, that's how we live our life. And the idea is that they kind of set out, you know, I'd like to write more. Um, and I think it probably lives somewhere in a kid's, in a kid's world, you know, like a kid's show or something like that. Um, although adults, it's for adults as well. As Kim says, it's for the young of heart. Yeah. Um, but they, they exist in this world where they, they get an idea that they want to be something and they're like, we're going to do it. And so they put in the effort and then they just happen to do it. They walk into the wrong door and all of a sudden they're supermodels when they were supposed to go left, they went right on accident. And, um, you know, I've got ideas for other ones along those lines. And we just, I guess during the pandemic, it just felt like it, it felt so dense and, um, there, it just felt ne necessary. And then, and now to really kind of promote some, some po more positive ways of seeing things and uh yeah so that's kind of how we and then we work together still on the letter writing campaign and uh we're always throwing ideas back and forth and yeah I just love her she's love she's her. my my twin <laughs> so I hope you don't mind me giving this away but I love what you what you said how you kind of tap into each other all day through your Marco Polo moments oh, yes. yes that, that I thought yeah. was just so cute and just beautiful yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's it's constantly like um and and there's something you know I will say just to like quickly go back to the stillbirth thing um there part of it part of the stillbirth is um a dance that she choreographed and because we both have a dance background when when she sent me the video of the dance without any other communication without any other other verbal communication I understood the whole character through the dance and I think that that just is also a way that Coley and I our friendship it's just like 
that's what our friendship is. We just understand each other. Maybe it's because of the way that we've absorbed things through dance and movement. And also, um, you know, the way that we've processed darkness into light. It's just our sense of humor is so silly. It's the exact sense of humor. And I think that yeah. when we started talking about the twin stuff, we were like, wow, we laugh at the same stuff like the same things that no one else seems to be laughing at you know but let's like <laughs> let's do something with that you know um I and that. I think there's something to you know um I have this mentor Elizabeth Kemp um who's who's since passed but she um she would always remind us that with the darkest dark comes the lightest light and I think I just I think that Coley and I I don't know if you feel the same but like we balance that out and then we also when needed balance that out in each other um and just have this like this this com this way of speaking to each other that's just so supportive i always freudian slip and call her my daughter's name and vice versa the other way around because coley just has this this pure place in my heart that is just i couldn't love her more Ooh. i'd explode <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to be, I'm happy to be connected with, with your daughter. Cause yeah. I've always told Kim this, her daughter is the most beautiful child I've ever seen. Oh, I would show I got to meet her. I, oh, yeah, I, would, her I would show strangers pictures of her. Children. They're like, I'd be like, you have, have to look care. at this child. <laughs> They're like, who is that? We don't care. <laughs> She's beautiful and so sweet. Oh my goodness. Yeah, ray of light. Just, She's a ray of sunshine. Yeah, she is. And, and you recently posted Kim a picture of you hugging your son and you, you oh. wrote something about, I hope he always comes to me when he needs, I guess that I forget your exact quote, recharge. But... Yeah, had his it was Power just... Rangers birthday party and he just needed to come over and hug me so that he could keep playing. And I obviously broke down into tears and just such a, such a special moment that, you know, you just hope that as when they grow into teenagers and adults that they still continue to return. And I know you're there, Jody. I'm sure your girls, girls are lucky. It's a fun place. <laughs> well, seventh grade, seventh grade is is the hardest, and then it depends how it goes after that. But seventh grade is the hardest. But yes, that it was beautiful to see on, on your Instagram. Mm -hmm. But also, Coley, I just want to go back to to it's things that you're doing and not negate because you're you're you've been in some incredible. The eyes of Tammy Faye, the first lady, Candy, uh, unbelievable. So your yeah. path went from the resident to yes. these incredible, very well-known things. So for those listening out there that are starting on this journey with your experience, I'm going to ask Kim, I'm going to ask you the same question, just so I'll give you a heads up. What do you tell them? How do they, they're looking and they're listening and they're hearing that you, you're both in things that are very well-known. How do they get there? What's the path for them? Well, I think everyone's path is going to be different. Um, there is no, there's no uh, protocol for this. I can say that what, what I did um, instinctually that has served me well was become a really good fan of other people's work, like show up for other people. Um, you know, if somebody has like a little show that they're doing at a little, you know, 10 seat theater, go to it. It, it really means a lot. And and, and it helps you to grow as a person to, to be, you know, witness to that, but also it gives support for someone else that might become support for you later down the road. And it's not like, it's not about like trying to set up what's, what's only for you, but really like putting out, uh, just supporting other people. I think that's been a, a really key thing for me and <sighs> making your own thing, uh, get out of, get out of the, um, the trap of just having the idea and not doing anything with it, even if it's terrible, just do it, do the terrible thing be, and be willing to be the worst person in the room. <laughs> that has been a huge uh, kind of thing for me is when I've, you know, even when I did the intensive, I walked in with this idea of, okay, I'm willing to be the worst person here um, because that's the person that's going to learn the most. And so I, I still take that into every room with me. Um, and, um, you know, I think beyond that, it, curiosity is really key, it, continuing to learn and grow and never think that you've gotten somewhere that you don't have to do any more work because that's just, it's just simply not the case for any of us, no matter what we're doing. Um, and I think you'll <clears throat> have a lot more fun along the way if you're, if you're curious, 
and um yeah in terms of what like what I've booked I, I couldn't tell you what the secret sauce is there it's just I, I've been lucky in in a way um and very talented <laughs> that well too. thank you thank you but I, I think, I'll say it <laughs> but I think even if you have talent you've got to you've got to strengthen it it's not it's not enough to just have talent I mean I've with every audition I'm like uh, I get a coach uh, or I get you know friends or something I'm like I want to I want to get better and I can't let my ego create fear in me that that makes me scared to to um to not know right. and so that's what I'd say. And you started at, you said at 35, right? I did. Yeah. <laughs> which is, which is probably a little bit unusual, but maybe not. I've always kind of latched onto the people that, that have done that and been like, Oh, tell me, you know, give, inspire me. Um, but I, I, I really like the idea that I actually started later because mm-hmm. I, I hope to offer that to other people, just the, uh, maybe to, to be able to give them inspiration to say, whatever it is, um, you can start again and it's not going to be easy. Know that it's just not, but that's okay. It shouldn't be easy. It kind of even goes with your theme of supermodel twinning, because at the end of the day, right there, whatever they believe they become. And so in a way that's exactly, you know, the whole premise here too, 35 starting out, should not that's not old you know but yet in the industry right they they might might have a different view but when you believe in it I always say when your why is greater than your how anything is possible and the reason you you know you started in this was with stillbirth and all and all the other things that you were doing and so it's just you know I can I can feel it 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 makes perfect sense as to why it worked for you yeah just try it just try it just go don't 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 think about it too much just like just leap yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the hardest part. I mean, that, and that's that fear. So it's so great that you were able to just move past that and keep going. Ham 10 is a leader in IT enterprise solutions and staffing. They are driven to transform their clients' business performances. They do this every day by providing their clients with the best services and products. Products like BizLego, an online community platform, and Colear, a unique learning management system. They also transform the lives of women and children through their associated nonprofits, SheTech, which supports women in and joining the technology field, and Softkin, support organization for kids in need. PAM10, technology for social good. Go to PAM10.com for more information. And Kim, for you, what would you, advice would you give and talk a little bit about, you know, your role because Pretty Little Liars is about to be coming out very soon you know I think um touching on the twins again the super twins who we love so much um I don't think we mentioned that that there there's a basis of the the course of miracles which is something that um Coley Coley directed me to during the pandemic which was also a lifesaver and guidance and meditation in the morning that was much needed. And I think it's like anything you set your mind to, you can do. And as foofy as that sounds, it's very true. And I think that at every level, the pressure seems the same. Um, and Coley and I talk about that a lot. So even when we were, you know, in our first co-star audition, that felt the same as, you know, the auditions we're getting now. So I think it's all about your mindset. And um, I've, you know, I, I talk to all of my actor friends and we're all in different levels and the ones who have gotten out of their heads are the ones that seem to be um, flourishing and it's never too late to do that. And it ebbs and flows. I'll be in my head tomorrow. Watch because I'm saying this, but you know, the ones who can get out of their head and truly believe it, that it can happen, that it, it happens. And, and I, I will say, you know, i um, you know, rightfully so, even teachers that I had in undergrad, they're like, you can't be a mom and be a successful actor. It's just, you can't have both. You can't do it. And I had that in my head and I listened because, um, you know, for them, that was true. And, and they were, they were looking out for us saying, you know, you got to choose, you gotta, you have to, you have to make this the most important thing. And while my career is very important, so is my family and having the oops of having my daughter in between it. I had this mentor, Sean Lewis, who still works at the actor studio. She's a mom. 
and she's she was a set designer for broad the Broadway and she's the most wonderful woman and she told me you know you got to come back next year and I was like Sean my daughter's gonna be four months old what do you mean like I'm done I'm done I'm not an actor I'll have my babies I'll go back into fashion and I'll be miserable and I'll just like put on a happy face and she said no you just have to come back because if you don't do that you're never going to do it and I said okay and the next day I I said um I sent an email to the you know to the person at the school office says, I'm coming back. What do I do? And I just made a decision. And then, and then from there, ever since Sean gave me the permission to be a mom and be an actor, I've just believed it. And I, that's, that's a twin superpower as well. And uh, it's not to say that there haven't been a bunch of growing pains along the way and there continue to be, but um, as Coley, a gift that Coley gave me was before going on set, she would, she gave me this phrase to say, which is, um, insert your higher power, uh, you know, dear higher power, or I would say dear universe or dear, you know, dear universe, please release my ego and connect me to your source. And, and once you just take your ego out, of, out, that's just constantly trying to sabotage, then you're just left with your talent and you're left with the connection. And um, I guess that's, you know, a roundabout way of just saying you have to believe in yourself and listen to people, but don't listen to people because it's so true. It's, there's no linear path. And your path to success is not going to look like someone else. And what makes you special is is like is it's something that nobody else has. And so um, you just have to hone in to to what to what your voice is saying, and then you just let it go. Um, I have to say, and I'm glad you touched on that. Is the you know the industry saying I'm doing quote unquote here? Um, you know, you can't be a mom and an actor. You know who may, you know, who says that, right? So it, the industry, you know, it's, everybody's an individual. And so you get to choose and make that choice. And if you believe it and you feel it, it can happen. But I am in so in love with what you both say before you get on set. I feel like I have to, I, I wrote that down because that was really, release me from my ego. I, I think that if we did a lot more of that in our general worlds, the connections we would have would be so much like what you two have. Mm -hmm. that's what we have to do is that, is that release from that ego. So, and the other thing you said, I took a lot of notes while you're talking, Kim, um, <laughs> she gave me permission. I don't know the answer to the question of why we wait for someone to give us permission and why we can't, you know, not always find it internally. We just need that little bit of like, you're going to be okay. It's, it's, it's going to work out. Um, you need to do this. I'm not sure. I don't have the answer. I don't know if either one of you do, but I know that that always makes us feel better when we're unsure if where we're going is the right choice. Yeah, so that's that is an interesting thing, and it's like, it's like I wish we didn't have to ask for permission either. Um, but then again, look at us—we're fighting for our reproductive rights, and you know we're we're not so far from removed from when from a time when we couldn't vote. So like we're still the the remnants of all that is still here. And as women, I feel like you know there's a little bit of an extra. Um, struggle there or the little bit of an extra fight there and, and I think that's part of it too it's like it's almost impossible to be um uh to have them to be a mom and have a successful career in any industry right but um it is helpful to have that I mean I think I needed to hear it from a powerful woman and that's who I heard it from and so there is something about a woman and the support of women I think um I'm not sure if I answered but um no, yeah, no. yeah there is something about a powerful woman who's made it telling you that you can do it and Agree. That's what totally. the twins do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, uh, th there was a mantra that I got from from the process of going through uh, losing Arlo, and it is it has served me well. And I'll share it and 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 let this be a, a symbol of um, permission for anyone that's listening. Do the thing, say the thing. Mm -hmm. Our lives are going to be short. You know, it's, you don't have that long. And the only thing that really matters, in my opinion, is the relationships that we have um, to ourselves and each other. And it, just do it, do the thing, say it. That's it. It's that simple. Just go for it. Cause you're not, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna end up being somewhere. Maybe you didn't think or plan but you're going to be somewhere that you're happy that you're going to be there. I mean, it's like, just try it. That's your permission. <laughs> yeah. That, and, and it's true because life is too short. 
life is very short and and you know unfortunately recently lost uh, someone that i knew and i have to say that it's it's just unbelievable you just don't know what tomorrow because i I, i'll say my what i my mantra at the end i always say is about how today is the day and that's why it's called that today Mm -hmm. is the day because we don't own tomorrow right at all so you know that's i i agree i get we're all giving everybody permission to whatever that thing is that's in your heart (laughs) If I were um, an impetuous tattoo getter, after this conversation, I would be covered from head to toe in the quotes that were, <laughs> that are being spoken from you, from Coley and Joan. I'd just be like covered in quotes. So this, this is my paper. Look at yeah, this. Yeah, that this would be me. My paper. Head to toe <laughs> in, uh, with insp- inspirational quotes from you both. <laughs> it's so Let's true. It. I'm going to put them in the show notes because I think that it's just important for those who may need it. You just don't know. It's it's just one sentence. Sometimes I was watching a show the other night till three o'clock in the morning. And it was one of those binges that you wouldn't think you'd get all this great insight from. And I was like, I think I'm watching this for a reason because the messages, if you're open to them, oh my goodness, you never know where they're going to come from. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, we, Coley and I talk about that all the time. Like we're constantly, I feel like if we just stop to look, we're being inundated with messages and confirmations and like beautiful coincidences constantly. As soon as we just like turn the thing off um, yeah. and, and we're open to it, the world and the way the universe works is just so beautiful. And we're, we have the support as, as the, the second we just stop and breathe, we have the support. Um, you know, when we, tur- as soon as we turn off the, the monkey brain, you know? the internal noise, because yeah. it is, it becomes internal you noise, you, can't, you know, <laughs> like, True. so like, I, like I said, I could talk to you guys forever, but what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to stop here. And I just want to hear, is there any other, me- before I ask you our last question, both of you, yeah. um, any message that you want to leave the audience with, um, we'll start there, but I want to say I want to have you guys back because I feel like the conversation should continue and can continue if you're open to it. So I would love that. I would love that. Coley, I'm going to have you start first. Anything else before I ask you the last question? Um, that a a messenger is that what you asked? Yeah, but anything else you want to share in in closing? Um, I I don't know. I feel like what what we were just talking about is probably one of my biggest messages: do the thing, say the thing, and um, yeah, whatever that little voice is, it feels like it's calling for something, listen to it and, and know that, that what you want is right. Kim. Yeah. Um, I'll say this. I think that we are in, I mean, we're always in this like really important time and space, but especially now. And I think that, um, the more that we can come together and is, and, and do the uncomfortable thing. And like you said, Coley, do the thing, say the thing. And, and um, do the scary thing that will help us to evolve, um, evolve. Um, and Coley, can you remind me who this was? But it, the, there's a brilliant woman who said like, we have to evolve into a species that won't destroy ourselves. And I think it's like, do what you're meant to do on this earth, listen to your calling because you've been given a gift for a reason and it's, to, it's going to help humanity. If you just hone in on that, don't listen to what your parents want you to be. Don't listen to what, you know, don't listen to any of that noise and just focus in on what your calling is and it will make the world a better place. Even if it feels like it doesn't, even if it's a little tiny domino, um, that's, that's, yeah, that's what I feel is so important. I tell my kids too, like, I know I, it seems like I want you to do a lot of things, but just whatever it is, do that. <laughs> just don't listen to me. <laughs> but you were a really good dancer, you know? <laughs> that's so great. So the last question for this year, I always ask uh, the same question for the year. Um, what is the footprint that you're creating right now that you want to leave behind? And Kim, I'll start with you. Oh, man. Um, that's a big one. Uh I'm, I'm, I'm really, I, I feel like it's um, just even through speaking mm-hmm. to family members and, and friends, I think that breaking um, intergenerational trauma is, is a big deal to me, just speaking about it and um, working on that with my cousins, even um, I would like to leave that behind. Um, I am working on this, that product, the Yogi Saver, um, I, that, that is in my manifesting prayers every morning. It's a company I want to leave behind to my, to my children. Um, and it's, um, it's a sustainable product. It's a yoga product and it's, you know, it will help the, the world be a better place. Um, uh, 
sustainably at least. And um, I think that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's the mark I want to make. I just want to, and I just want to spread love any way I can and spread my story in hopes that maybe it'll reach one person. And by the way, if anybody's watching this, you can reach out to me if you've experienced anything that I've experienced. Um, I am very open to starting starting a friendship and having conversations around it because um, Lord knows I wish I had that growing up. And so that now that's what I want to give back. That's that's so beautiful. And I didn't ask you about Yogi Saver because I know it's not fully patented yet. Oh, so yeah. when it is, when, when it, it is. is when it is, I want to, we want you back to talk about it. Cause I'm excited for you. Um, we're multi potentialite that you are, um, <laughs> another tattoo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so many tattoos. <laughs> Coley, what is the footprint you're creating now that you want to leave behind? I think, uh, I think my work around, uh, kind of destigmatizing and de uh, unshaming, uh, the discussion around women's reproductive rights. It's very bizarre that that's what <laughs> there's shame attached to it, but nevertheless, there is. And I want to, I want to help us to, to kind of like deconstruct that because I think that, um, a woman, uh, who is, who is unashamed, uh, and really, really beholds her own, uh, worth is, a woman that can change the world. And I think that we all um, are served by that men, women, um, and anyone that, that identifies otherwise. I think that we, I think for all of us to be in that way, but there's something um, obviously that I'm very attached to about uh, promoting that for, for the feminine or for the, for women. And, um, and the other part of it is that I, I believe in the power of laughter. It's it's why I, I so wholeheartedly go into that that uh, area of of the arts. I think that when you're laughing, you you can't be anywhere else other than the present, and it's very um, connect. There's a lot of connective tissue that happens around laughing laughing, and I think we really 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 need to laugh <laughs> a lot right now. And um, so that's another big, big one for me is to, to continue to create and uh, act in and produce and things that are, that are, maybe they're silly, but they're also lighthearted and fun and, um, and also serve as a way to, to help us to think about things differently. Comedy can do that as well, so. So the two of you are gonna change the world. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's what the twins said in the, that, the last episode. They're like, what's next? World peace? Sure. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> that is such a fabulous way to end this, this podcast. I love that. that <laughs> well, thank you, Coley Campany so and Kimberly Oslin. Thank you so much. This was wonderful. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah. We well, love you. I'm blessed. Oh, You're a twin I, now. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what triplets and Coley said. Yeah. So, so that's the first that Coley was like, she's a twin. You're like, yeah, she is. And she's, oh, I'm honored. Don't make yeah. me cry. Cause that's very Hard. special. So that's, that's awesome. Thank you. I felt the same way. Cause if you ask him when I sent back the, when I sent her a text after we've had our first conversation and that's what I want everybody to hear. You can find those connections. If you just let go of what you said, release my your ego and just let people in so beautiful so i'm going to say what i say at the end of every single podcast besides the fact that i'm grateful and blessed to know both of you and today is the day you cannot go back to yesterday and you do not yet own tomorrow so what step small or large are you going to take today to get yourself closer to your goals again kim and coley so awesome to have you here and i'm going to say have a great week everyone have a great Thank week. You. Thank you so much.